All right, folks, before we get into the show, I need to go over some breaking news with you. Fox News donates to Satanic Temple. I don't know about you, but for me, that's a sign to, oh, I don't know, not watch Fox News. Now, I haven't been watching Fox News for years. I think you all need to wake up smell the coffee and realize what's going on watch this in the complete opposite direction that once made their company very very successful among real americans we've told you how fox news was pushing their employees to support the trans movement and to make matters even worse they fired their top host who had the number one show on cable news tucker carlson all of that is terrible but now it's gotten far worse it's something that's hard to even imagine. Do you believe this? You can barely even believe a channel who pretends to push God, family, country would do something so horrible, what I'm about to tell you, to the viewers that watch their channel. Now Fox News is matching employees' donations to the Satanic Temple. We kid you not, I said it right. They'll match donations to the Satanic Temple. Proof is right there on the screen. Satanic Temple, right there. What makes matters worse is that Fox News won't match donations to the Billy Graham Christian Foundation, but will donate to the Satanic Temple. So this means if any employee wants to donate or contribute to an organization like that, Fox will match it fully up to $1,000 each. Fox is a company internal portal called Okta, O-K-T-A, where you can donate to all these far left organizations including but not limited to the Satanic Temple. Fox News is willing to match donations to the Trevor Project, Planned Parenthood, and the Southern Poverty Law Center. Radical leftist groups that have the most utmost disdain for conservatives and conservative values. Again, these donations to the Satanic Temple, the SPLC, Planned Parenthood, and the Trevor Project would receive 100% matching donations by the Fox News channel. And Fox News decides which organizations the company donates to, not the employees. So at Fox News, the very channel you, the American people, used to trust for news has sided with a far left's way of thinking. And now it supports anti-Christian agendas, the satanic temples. Fundamental vision is to assert themselves as the arbiters of Satanism. The Satanic Temple is an atheist leftist organization that has distributed satanic literature to children. Publicly performed unbaptisms, whatever that is, sought to ensure that women can legally have their unborn children killed by way of their religious abortion ritual and put up statues on government property that look like that. It's a stark and scary form of hypocrisy pushed on the American people that betrays their very loyal viewers. This recent revelation of embracing Satan is a stark reminder for all of us to remain beholden to the values of our viewers and to stand up for what's right no matter what. I think they do. I think actually some people are starting to. I've heard a lot of people saying, I don't think I trust Fox anymore, but I know my company, I'm pretty sure your company, we would not do this. It's one thing to have uh, the matching contribution, but not to the satanic temple. And by the way, right. up until last night, and maybe still true today, but I have an update on it. Up until last night, you could not give to Billy Graham. Okay? They weren't right. approved. Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Through God, we shall do valiantly for he it is that shall tread down our enemies.
in five, four, three, two. Oh yeah, folks. We're back with the listening. And guess what, folks? This is the listening one year show. Believe it or not, the listenings has been on the air for one year. Congratulations to the listenings. And folks, to celebrate this, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It ain't that hard. Just scroll over and hit that subscribe button. And let's do this, folks. Let's get back to the show. The listening. And today, on the show, is Pastor Pete Perez. Ooh, folks, we got a good conversation going on with Pastor Pete. So let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, the listening with Nathaniel in the interview with Pastor Pete. Let's go. Well, good morning, folks. Good afternoon and good evening. Whatever it may be for you, I hope it's absolutely blessed. And folks, we got a show for you today. We got a really good show because the listenings has been here for one year. Yes. And uh, that's amazing, you know. (laughs) And with us here on the show today, we have Pastor Pete. How are you, Pastor Pete? I'm doing great. Glad to be here. Well, we're glad, glad that we made it a year. Yes, we have made it a year. Awesome. Uh, the first shows were audio shows, so yes. quite a bit different. And then uh, shortly after that, we went to video. Awesome. And uh, so far, so good. And Pastor Pete, what is in store for the the future here? What do you feel? Are you talking about? The Both. podcast. Uh, the, about, we'll start with the podcast, and then we'll go into. So I hope that uh, the podcast will continue to reach others. We'll be able to do interviews, but as we discussed, like tonight, about possibly getting together and just doing some Bible studies on here. Oh yeah, teaching God's word, you know, Amen. and uh, pick a topic and, and study it up, and then maybe start out. Uh, I don't know how often we'll do those, but I'd like to do those and yeah. see what the interest is from people that are watching. Amen. Well, we'll we'll definitely start booking that up. Yes. Make that happen. Then as far as the church goes, um, obviously just continue to teach God's word and go through the Bible verse by verse, chapter by chapter. Um, I uh, love what our worship team is doing. It seems like our worship team is is always aspiring to get better and to grow. And yeah, with uh, a lot of compliments due to you, it says another man's lips praise thee. So I got to throw some kudos to my brother Nathaniel there <laughs> as being the leader of our worship team and just a, uh, all the effort this guy puts into the production of each um, Sunday and, and such. And so um, that's awesome. And I just, uh, I see our church kind of getting a, we're starting to get do a little more outreach, you know, we're starting Amen. to do some more outreaches and stuff and looking forward to that as far as um, <clears throat> seeing how we can, as a church, impact the community at large here, um, right here. This is our Judea, our Jerusalem here, Amen. you know? Yeah. And so I want to reach out. I mean, we've been doing some of it through cops and clergy and stuff, but uh I want to see us personally go out and probably do maybe a couple more outreaches this summer. Yeah. Uh, pick a park. Okay. Bring some burgers, bring <laughs> some, some hot dogs. We are, are going to be doing some, some uh, joint things with, uh, we're going to do something with the police station on August 1st. National oh, wow. night out. August 1st. Uh, yes. So it's called what? National. National night out. So it's uh cops do it across the land, if you will. And mm-hmm. so we're going to go over to a celebration park with them set up our canopy and our pop-up and hand out our literature and such. But um, we're going to go over there and uh, they say probably five to 700 people will be there. Wow. So that's something that we can go and set up a tent or, or like, what can we do there? What, well, like, what is it? Well, it's, it's the cops, cops national night out, I guess, kind of letting them know, but also we're coming in as like clergy and ministry oh, on I the see. side to okay, reach yeah. out to the community. So we hand oh, out cool. our flyers for, you know, the church and yeah. the listings and the podcast and the yeah. website and all that good stuff. And obviously we'll be handing out the 
million dollar Bibles that we got <laughs> and the gospel tracks that we got and That's just awesome. ministering to whoever God brings our way. Yeah. Um, secondly, we're going to do a back to school outreach August 5th, which is a Saturday, I believe. And that's going to be co-partnered with Pastor Collins um, Church here in Marino Valley off of Alessandro. And so we're going to try and hook up some backpacks and we're going to, again, go set up our canopy, set up all of our stuff. Mm -hmm. We get to plug our church. Oh, awesome. Even though it's at his place <laughs> and uh, just kind of reach out to the community as well at large. Uh, did you tell us the date for that one? August 5th. August 5th. So there's a couple of August outreaches. Mm -hmm. First week in August. Okay. Well, that sounds cool. Yeah. Um, now, last year, we had a big event. Um, toy Shoe Giveaway. The Toy Shoe Giveaway. Oh, yeah. We're going to go bigger so and that's, better. Oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. we're That's going to be a yearly thing. Okay. So uh, last year, we ended up being able to minister to about 550, 600 kids. Yeah. We're planning to try to double that this coming year and shoot for awesome. like 1,200 to 1,500. Yeah. that I mean, it so, was a awesome turnout last year. It was. And so those of you listening out there that were a part of that, yeah, get ready because I'm going to start hitting up the donations here real soon of uh, how you want to contribute to buy some toys and nice. shoes for kids. And we're going to go out and uh, shake and rattle the bushes and see who wants to help. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Uh, so on the uh, toy shoe giveaway, the, it's still going to be, what was it, December, right? Yeah, December. I think we rolled it. Um, I think we did ours like December 10th last year, if I remember. Oh, that sounds familiar. So it's going to yeah. probably be like the second week in December because mm -hmm. Pastor Sam at Calvary Chapel North Grove, he's going to do his the following week. So we kind of do them back to back. Yeah. And they come out, help us. We go out, help them. Well, that's, was Pastor Sam there last year? Oh, yeah. He was wow. working the toy. Him, him and like four guys were working the toys the whole time. Oh, wow. That And I got to do the same thing in his church. It's cool that, you know, these churches will come together to help another church with Absolutely, their yeah. event. I, I think yeah. that's amazing. And we got to hook up through the shoes with Pastor Sam, too, as well, which is, you know, um, that ministry that we uh, use as yeah. well. <laughs> that's really cool. So. Um, and now, so being a pastor at, at a church, being, you know, the, the head pastor, if you will. Lead pastor, yeah. Uh, some people may think, um, you know, well, you're just a pastor. It's a walk in the park. Your life is easy, right? But it's all, it's not that. It is not yeah. that, yeah. You know, it's um, tough, <clears throat> you know. It can be. What can you say about that with, through well, your experience? Through my experience, you know, and, and you know, these last uh, five and a half years as being a, a senior pastor, lead pastor, however you want to put it, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've been a pastor since 2003. Yeah. And so I got 20 years at it now, you know. And so um, this uh, part of being the lead pastor, you know, I mean, you get uh, one, it's a blessing to teach God's word. Mm -hmm. Two, I I, uh, I love shepherding. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, not every pastor is a good shepherd or a shepherd. Yeah. yeah. And I'm an under shepherd of God's church Amen. and God's people. They're yeah. his people first. Okay. That's right. They're not my people. They're and it's his church, not my church. Right. And so he's placed me in care of to pastor over this flock that he's brought, which I love doing. And I take it, I don't take it lightly at all. Hmm. But in the midst of that, yeah, you go through trials, you go through attacks, you have uh people yeah. attack you, you know, yeah. you have uh you know me, I'm a I'm a tent maker pastor, so I don't get paid financially at all from the ministry itself. Um, yeah. I get the benefits of seeing other people come into better relationships with Christ, mm -hmm. and that's I guess you could say my reward. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that, and I love seeing God working in other people's lives. And so, uh, but going out and working landscaping like today, I was working, uh, you know, hundred and three degrees working yeah. all day long in the sun and then come <laughs> yeah. back. And here we are throwing down the, wow. the podcast right now. Yesterday yeah. I fell off my trailer and oh, no. got jacked up, you know, a little <laughs> bit. I'm a little sore today. Wow. Um, but uh, it's a, uh, it's rewarding. Um, it sometimes, I guess you could say is, is challenging. You know, one thing I can say is that uh, the Lord has taught me and is that um, I just trust him. as like, like finances for the church. Yeah. Yeah. I just trust him. I just, I never trip on the finances. Wow. You know, um, the bookkeeper tells me sometimes, hey, we got to chill on this, blah, blah, blah. No, nah, let's just do this. You know what <laughs> I mean? And I just kind of go, um, I don't run by the seat of my pants, but yeah, 
I don't have a meeting for probably every single thing that we do. Yeah. And just some of it, I'm just like, hey, let's just do this. And we do it. And then God is so good, you know? And so um, I did that answer your question. Uh, it did. Yeah. In yeah. Gen general, you know? And, yeah. And then, uh, you know, the, the most important thing as a pastor, though, is, is it, it evolves back to God's word. Yeah. Amen. To sharing God's word, to implementing God's word, to teaching God's word, um, and what the Bible says. And then, uh, you know, I love ministering to God's words to people. Yeah, amen. In general. Amen. And, uh, you know, the people, how do I say? They're, they're not always um, easy. You know, everyone's got their own thoughts and own opinions. Yes. And uh, how do you handle that? Because to me, if I was a pat, I'd be like, you know, it would drive well, me crazy. <laughs> to give you an example, I guess you could say. Is I think that, it takes uh, a special heart. Sometimes, you know, like our, our areas, our facility is, is a little bit smaller in some areas. So, you know, some people think it's too cold when they come <laughs> there. Some people think it's too hot. Yeah. Some people think the worship's too loud. Some yeah. people think it's too soft. Yeah. Some people think I don't speak loud enough, shorter. Uh, who knows? You know, yeah, yeah. I'm not there to please all that. I'm there to please God. Amen. You can't please everybody. And so you have to know that going in, ultimately, I'm there to please God. Mm -hmm. And if what I'm doing lines up with his word, then I know I'm okay. Amen. And so sometimes people lean on their own understanding in some areas and, uh, you know, or they have a misinterpretation of something sometimes, mm -hmm. rarely at our church. Yeah. You know, there's been a little few hiccups this last year, sure. a little bit, you know, and God, <laughs> God deals with that stuff. You know, I just yeah. kind of trust him again, back to that. I just, I trust him. Yeah. Um, you know, when I have to deal with stuff, I do it biblically and I tell people what God's word says. Mm -hmm. It isn't necessarily my opinion of what I think right. in the matter. I take the matter at hand and then I take what God's word says. Mm -hmm. I try to present it to that situation and then I let the Holy Spirit work from there. Yeah. Some people take heed and they yeah. listen to God's word. Some people don't. I can only yeah. I can only present God's word. Yeah. If they choose to go somewhere else or leave or depart, you know, mm -hmm. well, I try to chase for a while and I'll always send out some phone calls and some text <laughs> messages and some emails yeah. for a time. And then I just pray for them and pray that God leads them somewhere where they can grow. Amen. Now, you know, I, some pastors, you know, numbers is a huge deal to them, you know, and sometimes that they wear it on their shoulders when only a few people show up to church. Right. So their sermon isn't as, I don't know, uh, as good as it could have been, I guess. Right. Uh, does that matter to you? Um, <clears throat> no. Uh, so you're going to get the same sermon regardless. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to put, try to put the best effort I can in. Amen. To the study time that I need to. Um, sometimes midweek, I'll be honest. Yeah. There's some that I've thrown down on the fly just because of a work situation or something went down and I didn't get to study maybe as intently as I wanted to. Yeah. Um, Sundays, I usually always try to put in the time and the preparation. I'm, I'm studying my text throughout the week and, Amen. you know, pulling out all my comments. I have like a war room. I mean, I have all my <laughs> books and stuff on my phone and just, you know, and I just kind of yeah. let the Lord lead me. Um, but no, I, I think it's a, I'm not a numbers guy. You know what I mean? If I was, yeah. I, I obviously wouldn't be still doing what I'm doing right now. Amen. You know, because yeah. can it be discouraging sometimes when you pull in the parking lot and it's empty? Yeah. And it's like you're getting close to starting time? Yes. Yeah. And it's funny because sometimes God has amazed me the most that that's how to be. And then all of a sudden everybody just shows up. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Then. And it's yeah. like the worship goes down and like, by the time I hit the pulpit, boom, yeah, it's, it's, it's fuller, you know? And, <laughs> and I'm like, wow, Lord, you're so cool. And so I got to realize that it's his church. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, um, I, uh, I, I always look at it like this. I would, as a pastor, I would rather have five healthy sheep than 500 people sitting in the pews. Amen. That makes sense. You know, and yeah. so, because if you have five healthy sheep that are hearing God's word, that are applying God's word, that are doing God's word, then when the new people come in, they're going to love on those people. Yeah. They're going to go and they're going to, you know, administer God's word through their lives to these new people that come through, you know? And so yeah. that's the benefit of that is, you know, yeah. 
God's the one that does. If you study in the Acts, it's first it was he adds to the church, and then later on he multiplies. Amen. And so I believe yeah. there's a time and there's a period where um, you just got to count on addition. Yes. And pray someday it'll be to multiplication. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I think uh, Purpose of Heart Ministries will have branches. You know, well, you know, that, it's funny you say that. Because uh, so when God gave me the name of the church, uh -huh. it was Purpose of Heart Ministries, plural. Oh, yeah. And I remember telling Carla the name of the church, and I first heard, and the kids were like, what? Purpose of Heart Ministries? You know, and I remember Carla said, you mean Purpose of Heart Ministry? And I said, no, Purpose of Heart Ministries, because God is going to birth many ministries through this church. Amen. Oh, and wow. so yeah. that's always been on my heart that that's what's going to happen. That's cool. Um, I think it will happen. Yes. You know, just it's that kind of church. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, if you come visit our church, you know, I, I see people make efforts to make them feel not a stranger. Yes. You know, because I think that's important. Uh, you know, I visited churches where you never been to before and not one soul will come say hello. Correct. And that just makes it feel awkward. <laughs> yeah. You know, do you want me here? <laughs> yeah. We have a lot of love in our church. I got to say that. Yeah. And that's something that I've had um, people that have come and visited or new people have come and they felt welcome. They felt loved. They felt uh, approached, mm -hmm. you know, because I've been to churches and visited too. And it's like nobody never knew you were there yeah. or that you left. They could care less. It's the craziest yeah. thing. Yeah. And so, you know, that's where we always got to make sure that we don't get stuck in clicks. Yeah. That's and click up. You know what I yeah. mean? Because I've heard the stories. I've, I've witnessed it. And, uh, I've seen from some some younger Christians of some bigger churches, if you will. Yeah. And it's like if they weren't in the clique, they didn't fit in. Or if they weren't in the clique, they weren't allowed to get in ministry. Right. And some of them spent their whole lives going through. Uh, it's almost as that, if that clique that, was the church to them. Correct. You know, and, and they were waiting for for their whole lives to get involved. And, yeah. and you know, and there's a few that we, we had for a season for a time where I went to them and said, hey. You want to be a ministry? Fill out an application. <laughs> Let's get you in there now because yeah. you're going to be a sophomore in college before they ever call you. Wow. You know, and some of them, we got to we got to be blessed by seeing some of that. So it was cool. That's awesome. Um, it, because uh, the cliques in church is a very dangerous thing because it's almost, it's almost like uh, they become a, a rival in their own church. You know, like, oh, I thought we were going to get that room before they use it for whatever mm -hmm. event they yeah. were doing. Um, or that date for that event or exact, what, yeah. yes and it just becomes a fight it, i it just can. think that's horrible <laughs> yes i remember pastor chuck a long time ago where he had a lot of wisdom and and I, forgive me if i don't say the story exactly but i remember that they were going to go i think it was for a fourth of july picnic and so half the church wanted to go to this park for the fourth of july and have barbecue and blah 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 mm -hmm. but there was no bathrooms and then the other half wanted to go over to this other area for that, you know? And so yeah. then they came to Chuck and they go, what do you think, Chuck? And he said, I don't know. Talk to the leadership. <laughs> and he stood out of it. Well. You know, and that was wisdom on his part because yeah. had he picked sides, one of the sides wouldn't have liked him on it. You yeah, know what I mean? And he just right. stayed out of it and said, I'm not going to get in the middle. You know, whatever you guys decide, I'll go with, you wow. know? And so that was, that was some wisdom in that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, before uh, the show here, we were talking and you told me an interesting story I never heard before. And uh, that was um, your pastor, Pastor Mike, um, may have set you up. Uh, yeah. Uh, I just thought that was a cool story about um, I, what the event you were talking to me about. Uh, so, so back when I was a younger pastor, yes, Pastor Mike was alive. Uh, yeah. So we're going back, you know, before 2003. Wow. And I wasn't a pastor at the time, but I remember, you know, I didn't know how the whole process worked. I just knew that uh, I felt like I had a calling on my life. And uh, at the time, there was uh, one week we were in a leadership meeting and three guys went to him the same week and all said, hey, I want to get ordained. <laughs> and so in my heart, it was a couple of guys. I was like, no, I'm not going to You know what I mean? But there was one that was like, yes. Mm -hmm. And that was Pastor Matt Allen. Okay. And, uh, and so I was a little like perturbed though, after I left that meeting, like, 
well, Lord, you've been putting this on my heart for a while. And I just thought that this is the way it worked, that if, I, if I'm if i supposed to be a pastor, Mike would come and say, hey, I think you should be a pastor. <laughs> but I didn't know, you know? And so it bothered me that whole week. I was praying. I was like bothered. And I was like, so then I saw him the next week and I said, hey, I need to talk to you. And we used to always walk laps because we were down in the storefront on 5th and D Street. Uh -huh. So we'd walk laps down over by the <clears throat> 99 cent store and come around. <laughs> and so we're walking along and I said, hey, Pastor Mike, I go, first of all, I don't need a title to do what God's called me to do. And I said, I'm going to be here with you, whatever God does with this place. You know, yeah. I said, but I think I'm being called to be a pastor. I said, would you pray with me? And when I told him, he started laughing and smiling, like, like I've been waiting for this day, kind of <laughs> seemed like it to me, you yeah, know? Yeah. But I didn't know the process. And he goes, yeah, I'll, I'll pray. And I said, okay. So like three weeks later, back then, we used to do this thing called Unity in the Community. That was about seven churches, I think, involved. And so the first Monday of the month, whoever the church was, the host church, we would go to that church on the first Monday in the evening and pray or that pastor's house and we would pray. Mm -hmm. And whoever was the host church that month, on the third Sunday evening, they would have a evening service at their church and all the other six churches would invite their congregations to go join it. <laughs> it was a really cool thing. Yeah, it was that, before that Cops and Clergy cool. even yeah. came along. And, you know, through the, I mean... I remember in Paris at the time, it was like the city council was all screwed up. The police department was all screwed up in Paris. Yeah. And we were just praying. And we watched God start working, right? But anyway, so Pastor uh, Mike called me up um, like 35 minutes before 7 o'clock that Sunday evening. We were the host church that month. And he <laughs> said, hey, Pete, I need you to do me a favor, brother. And I was like, what's that? And he said, I can't make the unity in the community tonight. You need to go teach it. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I don't have any time to study. Well, I was so freaked out because I'm a studier, man. I, I'm it's a only a few hours away before you got to. No, it was 30 minutes. Oh, 30 it, minutes. It was wow. like 35 minutes. And I had to drive still from my house out oh, there. Wow. So I only had like <laughs> maybe five, 10 minutes to do anything. Wow. And I was like, I, I got no time to, I had nothing, you know? And he goes, yeah. oh, brother, just preach on Psalms 133. How pleasant it is when brethren dwell together. In unity, it's like the oil that runs down Aaron's beard. You go on in Psalms 130, a small little <laughs> psalm. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay. So I got off the phone and I prayed and I studied this and I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And so I went there and uh, I was so freaked out. And just so happens that that Sunday, everybody showed up. Like <laughs> all the other six pastors showed oh, up wow. in other churches. A lot of people from all their congregations. It was, we had a pretty full house and I was like, Oh, great. <laughs> you know, yeah. I told Carlo, oh, great, you know, and, and, and I'm just like, my dad was there too. And I'm like, oh man. So I'm worshiping. And then it was like, during the worship, I just remember having my hands up worshiping. And it was like, the Lord just kind of gave me this thing, you know? Yeah. So when I got up there, I remember kind of what the theme was, was that though we have different names in all our churches, what our churches really are. Yeah. They're like bait and tackle stores. Okay. Yeah. So when you go to a bait and tackle store, if you're a fisherman, you're going to buy different types of bait to go fishing for different types of fish. Yeah. So if you look at it as a church, you know, we go in there and we get God's word and worship and prayer and whatever else. And then we take that outside the doors of the facility, the building, no matter what the name is, mm -hmm. it's a bait and tackle store to go fishing. You know, Matthew 419, Jesus said, come and follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Right. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you need stink bait to catch catfish <laughs> and you need some bloody bait to catch sharks. You know what yeah. I mean? And you yeah. need, you know, small bait to catch minnows and this type of bait to catch bass, et cetera. And so anyways, I went up and I started talking about it like that. And I said, you know, if I see my brother from Calvary Chapel reeling one in for the kingdom, <laughs> I go and help him land that person for the kingdom of God, not for Calvary Chapel, not for free indeed, or New Life Church yeah. or Cornerstone back then. Yeah. Um, our greater light, which was Pastor Briggs back then. And so well, we try to just land him on the stringer for God. And then we throw out mutual invitations to that person. Yeah. And then wherever God places them, ain't it great? You know, so Amen. long story short, um, I went up and I preached. I don't remember what else I said. Yeah. But when I got done, and I'm saying this humbly, but there was a, a lot of people that came up afterwards and they're like, man, that was really good. Wow. And what really blew my mind was Pastor Clarence Cooper, who's with the Lord now. And so he was the F Four Square Church down the street, same street as us. Mm hmm. And he came up to me afterwards and he said, and I wasn't a pastor yet. He said, Pete, he said, my granddaddy was a pastor. Hmm. My daddy was a pastor and I was a pastor. And that was the best sermon I ever wow. had in my life. 
And I was like, That's something. What? Yeah. <laughs> you, know what? you know, and yeah. so I don't know if Pastor Mike went and called other people to find out what they thought, but he came to me the following week. He's like, All right, son, I'm going to ordain you. What day you want to get ordained? Wow. And, and so I said, I want to get ordained on my uh, <laughs> wedding anniversary because I've been married seven years to Carla. Yeah. And then I figured I'd kind of be married to the Lord when I become yeah. a pastor. <laughs> and it was Father's Day. So I got the trifecta. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, not everyone, uh, you know, knows Pastor Mike on, on, on the show here yeah. that watched the show. Yeah. Who Who's Pastor Mike to you? Like, uh, what what is? So Pastor Mike Lewis was m my pastor. Mm -hmm. Um Raised me up from a knucklehead. Probably the first three years that he knew me, I don't think he ever called me Pete. He just called me knucklehead because I was a knucklehead with <laughs> yeah. a capital K there. Um, but he was my mentor. Yeah, I think I was his Timothy, as Paul had Timothy as a spiritual son. I was kind of like a spiritual son to him. And so when I was a knucklehead, I remember he took me in. 16 people live in his house. He took oh, wow. me in as a 17th. <laughs> wow. And the only room left was on his dining room table so i would slide out the chairs every night and i would lay my sleeping bag underneath his table and in the morning i'd get up and put all the chairs back you know yeah and so i was just so happy to be there because i was so screwed up back then yeah and jacked up on stuff and so and uh he just loved on me man and wow. he discipled me and uh he taught me so many things that uh i never realized how much he was discipling me at the time mm -hmm. till later on when i got to be in this role hmm and I learned a lot being an assistant pastor under his brother, Pastor Mark Lewis, for many years after he was went home to be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then when you hit the role of being a senior pastor, you realize some of the other things, <laughs> lessons that I didn't realize I was learning at the time <laughs> that he was kind of setting me up for. I mean, there's been a few times where I've gone through some stuff and I've glazed up to heaven and said, here's another nice mess you got me into. You know? <laughs> yeah. But uh, he was a great man of God. And uh you know, the one greatest thing I think that I learned from him was to love people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. How did, like, uh, how did he find you? How did you f actually find each other? How did that come well, about? Well, actually, me and my dad used to go to uh, Set Free Church back in Anaheim. Okay. Back in the day. Yeah. And then they decided to launch a Set Free in Paris. Mm -hmm. And so we were there day one when it opened. And uh, Pastor Mike and Mark weren't, weren't at the church yet. And so okay. we went for a period of time. I remember uh, being at that church there. It was a set free in Paris. And mm -hmm. our first pastor was there for about like eight months. And I was just a babe in the Lord. I knew nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. it seemed like when he got up there and taught God's word, it was doing something for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whenever I showed up. And then he got picked up because he was on the 10 most wanted. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> he had, oh, wow. He had like taken someone out in Texas and they took him away. You know? Wow. So I then, never heard uh, that. <laughs> yeah. So it was kind of weird. You know, like, wow, wow. I saw him on Saturday night and, you know, <laughs> cops or whatever, you know? And yeah. So uh, he wow. was gone. And then uh, we had like, you know, intern pastors come through, rolling through set free. And then uh, one day Mike and Mark showed up, you know? <laughs> and so, I remember Pastor Mark got involved in the in the worship after some time, and uh, they were looking for a church. They had moved out from where they lived out in Bellflower, wherever they lived, mm -hmm. out to Paris, and they were like had been church hopping, and they came over there, and and then I remember they started giving Pastor Mike uh, Tuesday nights, you know, and so just saying that the other guys that were preaching before they man. They used to throw shirts off the stage. I used to go there trying to catch a shirt. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> yeah. whatever they talked about just was like a lot of testimonies and sometimes bragamonies. And yeah. just wasn't yeah. getting for me. Right. And then Pastor Mike showed up and he started teaching on Tuesday nights. Mm -hmm. And he started going verse by verse, chapter by chapter, and he could teach. Wow. Oh, man, he knew that word. And it was like just penetrating me. Boom. And it was like I'd, I'd bounce all over the church trying to sit to avoid looking at him. Because mm -hmm. everything he was saying was like. <laughs> A Gatling gun, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, and then over time, uh, you know, they he became the senior pastor there. Wow. So you were there first, kind of, and then yeah. they showed up, and then that's how yeah. it got. That's yeah. how. Okay, yeah. wow. Well, uh, if Pastor Mike, because unfortunately I, I was never able to meet him. He was right. already been to be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, if he was here today. What do you think he would say about your journeys with uh, Purpose of Heart Ministries and starting? Oh, uh, I think he would have been probably one of our biggest cheerleaders. Yeah. One of the biggest fans. Yeah. He was, I had a great relationship with my pastor, man. I mean, I lost my grandpa two weeks before Pastor Mike went home. Oh, wow. 
And I cried for my grandpa, but I cried probably about seven, eight months every day Wow, for Pastor Mike. That's how close I was with him. And, wow. uh, you know, he shared a lot of things with me that, uh, I don't know, he, you know, some stuff I know he probably shared with nobody else. <laughs> and uh, we were very close, you know. I mean, I loved that guy. Yeah. I mean, genuine love wow. and affection for him. And so, and he was just that type of man. I mean, he was just a great pastor. So I think he would say, uh, continue the good fight. You know, he had a couple of sayings that I'll never forget. He always said, time is the best test. <laughs> and like the Bible says, your sin will find you out. Yeah. You know? And so I've learned uh, probably more so that one about time is the best test. Because some things, you know, when you're younger in the Lord and you got more zeal and yeah. less wisdom, I guess, you, you're you a little more rambunctious to go and to jump into things where yeah. maybe you could have taken more time to just pray and to sit back. Yeah. And so I've kind of learned a little bit. I mean, I got some more gray hairs going on now. <laughs> so I've learned not to rush into things and to kind of chill a little bit and pray, yeah. put it more to prayer. Yeah. And sometimes more so than, than, than not, I see God kind of fix the problems or solve the problems, or he, he gives me wisdom on how to go about it mm -hmm. better than Pete would. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But, yeah. uh, I think uh, I think Pastor Mike would have been proud, and I think he would have been happy. That's awesome to see this happening. That's awesome. Yep. I'm sure he's uh, rejoicing in heaven, no matter what. Yeah, man, I can't wait to see the guy again. I mean, he was just uh, one heck of a guy. And that's the thing we have to look forward to as Christians is seeing those that we've loved that have yes. passed on who who believed in the Lord. And oh yeah, to me that's a amazing thing, you know, because yes. they're not gone forever. Right? No. You like know. Carla, Carla lost an uncle last week. Oh, know? and you know he'd been ill and he had some stuff, and you know he's up there in the streets of gold now. That's awesome. You know, yeah. there's no more suffering. There's no more of that. And yeah. So, you know, we got to know those people that have gone before us. You know, the saints that are up there. Mm. They're our future. That's you know, right. Yeah. If they were a saint. Yeah. You know, and so that's the beautiful part is uh, knowing that hope. You know, I mean, when you do funerals and stuff, sometimes for some people. And you have people going, yes, you know, say these great things about this person. You find out about the person and it's like yeah. <laughs> they didn't have no relationship with the Lord. Wow. They were just partying and they were just, I'll never do someone's service and say, oh, yeah, they're up in heaven. But I always will go back to that one part of the Bible where it says the 11th hour, hmm. you know, when he went out and paid the, the wages for each one. And he paid the guys that only worked a couple hours at the end of the day. Yeah. He paid everybody the same from the guys that worked in the morning. So, wow, you know. And I look at the thief of the cross. All right. he said was, remember me. The guy didn't have time to evangelize. He never put a, 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 a penny in the, in the, in the kitty as far as the yeah. offerings. Yeah. You know, he never got to get baptized. Right. He never got to do communion. Oh, he yeah, never yeah. got to do any of the things that we do in church, if you will. Yeah. All he did after he mocked Jesus. Right. And after he said to the other thief, we have done bad things, hmm. paraphrased. You know, they were they were criminals. They were thieves. Some speculate they were possibly even were murderers, like hmm. Barabbas, okay? Yeah. But a part of his crew, whatever. Anyway, so, but somewhere along, as they were all hanging on the cross there, he realized this is a just man, a righteous man, and I'm not. And he looked over to Jesus and said, remember me. Remember the other guy was mocking and saying, if you're the son of God, take yourself down here and take us down too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And all Jesus said to him was, today you'll be with me in paradise. Mm. That's a beautiful thing. If you think that is that, a very you know? beautiful thing. So, you know, people, like God gives you till your last breath, almost like. You know, that's why we, we don't know. I mean, we, we can't play the Holy Spirit on somebody. Yeah. You know, we just can hope the best. Yeah. But, you know, it's just like when you're praying for someone that's stage four cancer. Mm. We sure we pray for that miraculous healing. Sometimes that healing is he's going to take them home. Yeah. So we pray with the hopes and aspirations that God will heal them and we'll see them get up out of that bed and go home. Yeah. And sometimes we see that that spirit gets up out of that bed and goes home. That's right. You know? Uh, speaking of healing, you know, like uh, the gifts, I, you, like tongues, mm -hmm. healing. Mm -hmm.